Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, a nerd in war paint, Antonio Hernandez, Ice Storm Shadow, Nathan Welch Jr., and Valenbrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Wasteland 3. As we uh, complete our exploration of the Patriarch's secret bunker and uh, have a quick chat with his prize catches. Of course, we also have some level ups to take care of, so let's jam through that real quick first. I will say, uh, it turns out I've been delaying... Uh, leveling up for a while now, so we have accrued a fair amount of points. We should be able to max out at least a couple of different skills. Which, in some cases, is obviously... Obviously more just a matter of convenience than practicality. Then, in other cases, it is a very practical point expenditure. As with Dahl's sniper skill. Something which, uh, let's be honest, I really should have maxed out at least five levels ago. But better late than never. That's what happens when you uh, spread yourself out a bit too thin, which I am definitely guilty of doing. I would like to bump uh, Bonker's Intimidate skill one more time, but after that, uh, I guess it's time to move him into a new skill. I'm not really sure which one yet. I suppose the running gag would be to uh, give him Animal Whisperer as well, so he can tag in another pet pal. But I'm not entirely sold on that just yet. Still waiting on a skill book for small arms, so we'll just bump weapon modding for now. I suppose that's overdue as well. And Reckless for Pazepi, which, honestly, I really thought I had already taken. Alright, good enough. Let's get back to it. In the bed lies a broken old man, dying from multiple terrible injuries, and breathing only because of a machine. His eyes roll toward you as you approach. Who's there? You removed my captors. Good. Now, take me out of here. I... I must die under the sky. Hmm. Who are you? It is not mercy that keeps me from killing you. For not knowing my name, my body betrays me. Sure, sure. I am clouds drifting west, leader and prophet of the Godfishers, slayer of unbelievers, launcher of a thousand kites. 
Need. Um, if we take you out of that bed, you'll die before we leave the room. Then end my life here. Better than waiting. Why are you here? Buchanan's daughter turned my people against me. They beat me, broke my bones, but I escaped. Came here, ordered Buchanan to make good on our deal. He turns his back and drags me. Here, may lightning strike him. You had a deal with the Patriarch? Deal? <laughs> he paid me tribute so that I would not raid his lands. Men, women, he delivered to us offerings for kites. Raise them to the gods. You are lying. The Patriarch would never trade innocent lives for security. <laughs> Believe what you want, girl. The people the uh, Patriarch gave you were convicts, though, right? When the Tangles told us everything. I didn't care who they were. To me, they were nothing but offerings to bait the gods down from the sky. You know, uh, we cleared your followers and their kites out of Denver. Then they did not pray hard enough. Yeah, that's about as much sympathy as I expected from you. All right, so I'll be frank here. Um, I'm not really comfortable with the idea of executing an invalid, but at the same time, it's pretty obvious that um, if there's anyone in the game that deserves to be killed, it's probably Clouds here. He is the unrepentant leader of a still active murder cult. You know, and one who engaged in some shady dealings, etc., etc. But that's really more on him, I think, than the Patriarch. I would actually like to uh, have a quick chat with Daisy about the work camp, now that we know what the whole deal there was. But, um... It is starting to sound like they were really just sending criminals there. Obviously, we have no way to know that for certain. But, um, I would say that between the two, sending the prisoners to be executed and actually chopping the prisoners up and using them as kites would probably paint Clouds as the bigger villain. Anyway, I think it's also safe to say that uh, regardless of what we do with the Patriarch, these gangs have to go. So, yeah. All right. We'll end your suffering. Shut off the machine beside my bed. Gods, prepare my welcome. I am coming home. The only thing keeping this broken old man alive is this life support machine. The old man chokes and bucks, fighting for air, but to no avail. As he dies, his eyes find yours. They do not shut. Well, that was horrific, but, um... On the bright side, that is one more loose end tied. Let's go tend to another. Oh, 
I guess I forgot to loot the hopper we took out earlier. <laughs> now, uh, much like the previous groups, we will try to talk these guys down, but that hasn't really worked out for us. Oh, yeah. They're just uh, straight up marked as hostile. Destiny provides. You'd better be here to rescue me. I'm not trading one set of jailers for another. In these bastards and let me out of this cage! Shoot! They saw us! Oh, well, uh, so much for that. Let's talk first. Not until I'm free. Oh, well, then I guess you are going to rot in there. I guess I am. Huh. <laughs> well, you uh, have to admire that kind of uh, stubbornness, I suppose. We'll circle back around to him in a bit. We'll uh, loot the room first and then take another run at him, see if he's uh, come around. Also, uh, you probably noticed, but I was trying to pad out that last fight a little, just so I could enjoy that music. That's a good track. You know, while I do have some uh, points of criticism for Wasteland 3 as a whole, the soundtrack is definitely not one of them. With the possible exception of um, maybe the Monster Mash and the Green Acres renditions. I'm not a huge fan of those, but they're not bad. Typed letter. Captain, as agreed, the first payment has been placed at the drop site you specified. Keep the bunker buttoned up and we'll make another drop each month. Buchanan. Well, he certainly got what he paid for. A bunch of cheap, discount mercenaries who couldn't get the job done. See, that's why you uh, hire the Desert Rangers for this stuff. Probably would have helped to be a bit more forthcoming, too, but it is what it is. Hmm. 
Well, I am very glad I sent Doll in there solo. Sheets of thin plastic hang from a curved metal rod. The original pattern is faded, obscured by decades of mold stains. Cool. Well, shoot. I was really hoping we'd find something nice in here. Given the music and all, this really seemed like it was... Well, not really a boss fight, but... Definitely a fight that should have resulted in some sort of unique item. Hmm. To be fair, this stuff would be a lot more viable. If we had uh, actually hit the bunker between the first two acts. As was obviously intended. Alright, Cordite. Let's chat. Thanks for the rescue. Now, who are you? We're the Desert Rangers. Never heard of you. What's this about? Tell us about your dealings with the Patriarch. My dealings with him? <laughs> you mean my shame. I was... I am warlord of the Scar Collectors, greatest slavers of the Colorado Plains. When the Patriarch came east to put us down, we gave him more than he bargained for. Stopped him cold. I know he tells his people he secured his borders by beating us. Makes himself out a real hero. Bullshit. He made a deal. Gave the Scar Collectors Piasso's and Godfish's money and supplies to hunt east and keep the smaller gangs out. I don't believe you. The Patriarch would never do such a thing. You wouldn't believe what your Patriarch would do. What was so bad about the deal? Security is the enemy of ambition. Got so used to having the Patriarch hand me my living, that I forgot my destiny. What destiny is that? <sighs> An oracle told my mother I was born to make the Wakarusa Redlegs the greatest horde in Kansas. Was gonna use the Scar Collectors to unite the Colorado gangs, then lead them home to take what's mine. But the deal with the Patriarch made me lazy. And Destiny's a jealous bitch. Ignore her, and she'll have her revenge. How did uh, Destiny take her revenge on you? Another Buchanan. After Liberty failed to take her daddy's throne, she ran our way. Realized pretty soon she could turn our gangs against us by telling them about the deal we made with her father, which we'd kept secret. She told him we'd settle for table scraps when we could have had the whole of Colorado. That we'd become guard dogs when we could have been kings. Which was the truth. So the gangs rose up. Star the dreams over through clouds drifting west to lead the godfishers. Let Chirito kill Slapstick to take the payasos. And that rat steel trap jumped me and sold me to a bauxite mine. Now he's running the Scar Collectors. Not for long. How'd you get from the Bauxite Mines to here? Another stupid mistake. Wasn't hard escaping the mine, but then I ran to Buchanan. Asked him for help taking back the Scar Collectors. Promised him I'd capture his daughter for him, reign in the gangs. Fool. He told me I was weak and useless. Threw me in here. Well, I was weak. I let him distract me from my destiny with easy living. Now I'm back on track. And he will die for seducing me. Hmm. 
If we let you go, what are your plans? Once I take back the gangs from Liberty, I'll lead them east, away from your pretty little city, and use them to once again become ruler of the Wakarusa Redlegs, and then all of Kansas, as was ordained. You see, that's where we hit a bit of an impasse, because I don't really like to uh, enable warlords. Especially not one who believes it's his destiny to someday rule the entire world. But there's one thing I gotta do before I leave Colorado. Put the Patriarch's head on a spike. If you want that too, maybe we can walk the same path for a time. What do you say? Could you use another gun? You know what? Uh, let's circle back to that in just a second. We've got a few more questions for you. Make them quick. How can a man who loves freedom so much be a slaver? If a man is destined to be free, then he'll be free. If he's a slave now and doesn't think that's his destiny, then he should fight for it. Like I have. Oh, that does uh, conveniently cover all your misdeeds. Why should you feel guilty about it? It was destiny. Where'd you get that arm? Can't be a scar collector without modding yourself. Part of getting jumped in. I chose the arm. What are those scars on your chest? When I was born, my mother carved 12 lines into me, symbolizing the 12 trials I would overcome before I ruled all of Kansas. I've been crossing them out ever since. Once I take back the Scar Collectors, I cross out the 11th. Hmm. I am curious what the other 10 were. Okay, let's get back to deciding what to do with you. Can't wait. All right, well, obviously I think this is a bit of a foregone conclusion. I did try to justify to myself any reason to keep Cordite alive. He's an interesting character. But at the same time, he is a warlord, he's a slaver, he's completely unrepentant and intent on conquering the entire world. So there is just no good that can come from uh, letting him roam free. That said, I do suspect that his survival is likely to be canon going into Wasteland 4, but for our purposes, I think we're done with him. Does that mean we're parting ways or fighting? Oh, so I guess they're going to force our hand on this. All right, then. Sorry, we got to put you down. Well, I ain't dying alone. <laughs> Good luck with that. You want to brawl? No! Knock yourselves out. Mm. Boom! Ah! That was awesome. Oh. Well, to be fair, he was technically right. He did not die alone. There are like 20 other corpses in this uh, bunker with him. Plus clouds. I'm sure that guy's great company. At any rate, let's go grab our chicken. I think we're done here. Look alive. Whoever took out the other shift could still be around. Oh shit! It's the Desert Rangers! Pull back! Do not engage! The Patriarch can keep his money! Right behind you! <laughs> Well, I am glad to see that it, that at least a couple of these guys do have um, some sense of self-preservation. Curious? Someone has added synthetic parts to this chicken. You think that's weird? You should uh, check out the coop back at HQ. 
What a splendid little chicken. It has magnificent feathers, impressive lacing, and a beak structure like something out of a children's book. The bird studies you with a calm, intelligent eye. Even its clucking is well enunciated. Wait, did you actually speak? It most certainly clucked. Why don't you uh, come with us? It bounces closer, the feathers along its throat tufted, surprise evidenced in its expression. After a moment, it nods to itself and begins waddling in stately pursuit. All right, let's get this guy back to his buddies at the uh, chicken coop. And uh, I figure we'll round out the rest of the episode by tying a few more loose ends. Get ourselves set up for our official entry into the third and final act of this campaign. Though I am starting to hear rumblings about DLC in the works. Nothing official just yet, obviously, but it does sound like it's happening. How did you hear that? Oh, well, I've got friends all over, and they've all got good eyes. I don't really see much point in trying to shame Angela. She is outright advocating for assassination. We met Cordite, all right. He was locked up in the bunker, just like you said. So now that you've talked to Cordite, you know what the Patriarch is really like, right? I mean, yeah, but we kind of already knew that. We talked to a criminal with a grudge. How are we supposed to trust his opinion any more than we can yours? Well, I guess you gotta make up your own mind. I just wanted you to know that the way the Patriarch tells the story ain't the only way there is to tell it. Is he with you now? Yeah, we'll uh, get to that. Why is Cordite so important to you? Let's just say there are places where our hopes for the future overlap. Now, do you have him or not? Yeah, see, I don't like that, because his only two hopes for the future were killing the Patriarch and conquering Kansas and the world, so, you know, not a great look for you. Come on, we need you to tell us more about Cordite. Sorry, cowboys. Not till I can trust you a little bit more. Now, don't keep me in suspense. Is he with you? Gosh, no. He, he died in the fight. Sorry. Well, well, I'm sorry to hear that. He could have been useful down the road. I guess we'll have to recalibrate a bit. At least the Patriarch doesn't have him anymore. So there is a bright side. Sorta. Thanks for trying. In the meantime... We're all for you helping the Patriarch collar his kids. Can't have a bunch of rabid animals running around loose, can we? Although, I guess he wants you to bring them back alive. We, uh, we don't care so much about their condition. Fact is, Colorado will be a whole lot safer without them. The Patriarch's heirs will always have a claim on this land. And from what I hear, they're even worse than Buchanan himself. Anyhow, I'll be in touch. Dead red, over and out. Now see, again, um, that's obviously not a great look for her, advocating the assassination of the Patriarch's heirs and the deliberate violation of our deal with him to uh, rescue his children or arrest his children in exchange for um, sending supplies back to our friends in Arizona. The last time anyone saw the but at the same time, she's not, she's not entirely wrong. I mean, they are dangerous. But I also don't know if I realistically see them 
legitimately claiming the Patriarch's throne once he passes. Because at this point, they've pretty much burned all those bridges. Uh, you know, maybe Valor at a stretch. But even there, it's pretty iffy. He, he just doesn't have the respect of the families. And I can't imagine the Marshals would treat him much better. Though it is possible that, uh, much like the Gippers, the Marshals might try to use someone like Valor to prop up their own rule once the Patriarch is out of the picture. You're a barrel of monkeys, huh? Oh, speaking of which, let's, uh, let's go have a chat with Daisy real quick. All right, all right. Burn. You're gone faster, and three cremations of your family say that you bust. Nice to see the city back to life, huh? Yeah, people are shopping and building. Well, rebuilding. Almost like we were never attacked at all. It's gonna take months to recruit enough new marshals to replace the ones we lost, though. Yeah. What do you need, Rangers? We have a question for you. What's on your mind? We know about the uh, work camp and what happened to the convicts who were sent there. Hell, the work camp is no secret. It's a hard labor prison for career criminals far away from law-abiding folks. Hard labor's better than the pillories, right? Yeah, see, um, the Patriarch doesn't have any work camp at all. You gave the convicts to the Godfishers, who cut them apart as sacrifices. <sighs> Old Saw warned me you'd dig up our secrets. I was right next to the Patriarch when he struck that deal with the Godfishers. We had lost a lot of people fighting the gangs, but somehow they kept coming. Knocked down one, another took its place. Looked like we'd be overrun. So Old Saul made deals with a few gangs to protect us against the rest. In the case of the Godfishers, the deal was, we give them the worst of our convicts and criminals, they don't raid our land or murder our people. You rangers know what it takes to survive in this world. Our choices ain't pretty, but you do the best you can for the most folks you can help. Simple as that. Hmm. The way she explains it, it actually sounds a whole lot more reasonable. I mean, she's not wrong. Especially not in a world like this one. Roger that. I am glad we uh, wang-dang-doodled by the Marshal's office. It does give us some interesting context. Let's see if we can eavesdrop on anything else here. One time, a buddy told me that before the deluge of fire, there were dudes called air marshals. <laughs> Cops with jetpacks? They flew around catching perps from the sky? <laughs> I think so, man. If anyone can bring that tech back, it's the Patriarch. We'll be cruising over the market square one of these days. <laughs> that is a pretty fantastic thought. Let me buy you a drink after our shift ends. I know a place in Knob Hill. Yeah, I need it. Thanks. I've got to say, I do like a lot of this uh, fully voiced background banter. Uh, I was commenting last time around about how there wasn't a lot of reason to return to some of these locations, but in some cases, like this, there was actually some fun stuff to listen to. But then you've got other locations, like the uh, Colorado Springs Market or the Bazaar, where it's just a repetitive cacophony of the same, like, six quotes over and over again. It's a good idea, but there is some definite uneven implementation. Ooh, what have we here? Badly typed note. A folded sheet of paper stuffed in an envelope. There are many strike-throughs and all caps words. Handmade knight costume. And a handmade wizard costume. I wonder if that's our reward from Scara Bray. Let's see here. 
Rangers, we found this box of evil in the ruins of the Denver Convention Center. It was labeled Denvention 2 Costume Contest, 81. We don't know what any of that means, but these are clearly the vestments of some evil cult. And we hope that, as the upholders of all that is good and true in Colorado, you will investigate their origin and wipe their owners from the earth. May the Lord bless you. The McCoskies. George and Pat. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay, this is not, in fact, tied to the uh, the Bard's Tale Easter egg. This is actually uh, the free costume stuff from um, one of the more recent updates. The Rangers and Robots update. I actually completely forgot about that. Chicken delivered with no discernible results. The five chickens seem to be of one mind, lost deep in the interminate depths of infinite computational calculations. Well, that's... that's new. Also, uh, I'm glad to see our new recruits are finding such practical ways to pass the time. We're a real crackerjack operation. Aha! That certainly looks like something from Scara Bray. Bardic jacket? Bardic hat? Bardic tights? I have never seen this set before. I'm not sure it was even in the game back when I played my, um, my early review copy. Interesting. Plus one charisma. Not bad. A bit redundant for our current crew, though. Plus one leadership. Slightly more useful. That armor is pretty meager. But to be fair, given relative placement, the book in uh, Denver and the game in the Bazaar, this was obviously intended to be something we found way back at about the one-third mark of the campaign, right after Denver, but before Aspen or the Dorseys. It definitely looks like mid-game armor, so it's really more my fault for, for doing things all out of order. Just as well, I suppose. I can't really uh, justify swapping out our exosuit. <laughs> not bad. Not great, but not bad. I do like the fat loot. I do think it's silly that you have to shave your head to wear a hat, though. Let's go uh, wrap things up with Wolf. Yeah? We killed Tinker. Here's her head. Nasty bitch. Glad to hear it. Here's her bounty. And that's the last of the fuckers. At least the ones connected to October 11th. Good work. We're gonna head further east to keep the hunt going. But we'll hang out for a bit longer in case you need us. And I wanted to give you a little special something for being such a stalwart defender of humanity. This book. This book taught me everything I needed to know about life, about what it means to be human, and most importantly, how to protect humanity from any threat. Read it, Rangers. You'll love it. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't really listening. I was just imagining all the really cool cybernetics I'm going to get the second you're out of eye shot. But thanks. Yeah. Also, you uh, you guys totally forgot about tourmaline? But it's cool. I'm sure you're on top of that. Best job ever. <laughs> Glad to hear it, Austin. 
Nick Markowitz's Stealth Squad. Go inside Stealth Squad and learn the missions and methods of America's deadliest soldiers. Written by former Special Operations Mission Leader, Sergeant Dick Markowitz. Plus one combat shooting. The only way to actually learn that skill. Which, sadly, we can only give to one character. Once again, I've never actually had this before, but from what I understand, it's a stacking crit chance bonus. Which immediately leans me towards giving it to Dahl, our dedicated sniper. But I'll also acknowledge that uh, sniper rifles did get nerfed pretty heavily uh, in the more recent patches. So it might be better off on a character with faster, cheaper attacks. Which would be pretty much anyone else in the party except for Retcon. So I'm going to have to give that some thought. In fact, let me know what you guys think, too. Um, I would be happy to hear feedback on that. It's absolutely marvelous being able to stretch my legs without, of course, Rangers. It would be impolite not to share such tremendous deals. Thank you, Ananda. You are a gentleman and a person. Dude, is there any more to drink? Bro, ease off. You drank a fucking case last night. Yeah, but I just puked most of it up again, so I need to reload. I think you're out of luck, dude. This shit is, like, drained. Oh, bummer. Nice kids. I do feel like um, this is the main drawback to not recruiting folks like Cordite and Fishlips and Victory. There's no one for uh, Quan and Scotchmo to talk to. Uh, we do have Jody, but she sequestered herself off in the garage. So all of her banter is with the uh, folks who are set up over there. Your hired mechanics plus... Um, Plus the guy you rescued back at uh, Aspen, whose name I am completely blanking on at the moment. Gross. I would rather not have that in the base. A plaque reads, A hydroponic bay taken from the bunker where the Buchanan family rode out the deluge of fire. The Patriarch now holds his enemies there, in the same luxurious comfort he once enjoyed. That does seem like a good idea. Having uh, clear evidence of our illicit raid on the Patriarch's bunker right here on full display in our museum. Also, uh, I can't help but note I am not seeing any Reagan memorabilia. Or Reagan himself. That is, uh, that is actually more upsetting than that horrible skin kite. Come to think of it, we're, we are actually seeing a fair number of empty displays here. I'll have to poke around online, see if I can find a comprehensive list of all the trophies you can collect throughout a normal campaign. Just giving you a hug last time. But why do I still have bruises on my neck? Yeah, I will... I will say it seems odd to have them in adjacent cells. That does seem like poor planning. Oh. More people may mean more mouths to feed, but you can't just let them starve. Careful out there. It's an uncaring world. Good that you saved some people from my brother's craziness in Aspen, but that won't be good enough for my father. Half done is as good as none. 
That's what he always told me. You saved the Reed girls! Uh, yeah, that's too bad. You wouldn't believe how they picked on me when we were kids. I could be out of here in ten seconds if I had my tools. Well, gosh. That sounds like a good reason to not give you tools. Violet Reed always used to pick on me. So, I don't really care that she's dead. But my father will. Yeah, I was warned that there were some uh, trigger issues with the Reed sisters. Board, board, fucking board, 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 fucking board. Would you please shut the hell up? Board, 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 fucking board, board, board. Shut the fuck up! Rangers! Val swearing at me! <laughs> that would actually be adorable, if not for the fact that you are a serial killing monster. Not only did you save Riley Woodson from certain death, but you performed major surgery to keep his feet intact using only a single med kit. Wow! Wow, indeed. We're still not letting you out of there. Ready to expand my vistas and learn new things. Thanks so much for inviting me to the party. I already talked to Doc Parker and sterilized myself from ass to applicator. So I'm ready to assist him when you guys hurt yourselves. But listen, I owe you more than that for this opportunity. So let me share something with you. Having electronic eyes helps me spot things when I'm scavenging. But that isn't all of my secret. It's all about the filtering, knowing what not to look at. And now you know. And knowing is half the battle. How are you liking it here so far? It's new. It's different. Lots of people to meet. Don't think I'm gonna get bored anytime soon. So I'm a happy girl. She's a sweetheart. Where did you get your, uh, unique vocabulary? Back at the commune, Vivi Secto saved an old prospector from dying and spent a few days helping him convalesce. He was a talkative old coot. Guess that memory was part of the slice of his consciousness I got made from. Fair enough. See you later, Vicky. Hasta luego, benefactors. Not seeing any romance path options here. That is a travesty. But I guess that wouldn't be fair to Disco Bot. Don't suppose you've got something for us? Gippers and oil go hand in hand. So, I'm glad you didn't bite that hand. What do you need, Rangers? Fine. Just don't get shot up out there and make more work for me. Cody, if you ever want rich full time, I know a dozen Arapaho garages who'd be proud to have you. I thought you had to be a Arapaho to work for the tribe. Well, mostly, but they'll make exceptions for exceptional talent. And you got that. Well, I appreciate the suggestion, but as soon as the Rangers finish this job for the Patriarch, I'm heading back to Arizona and my family. Things are tough there right now, and there's a lot to do. Hmm. Do they need mechanics? Do they? Boy, howdy! Hmm. Thinking about taking the Arapaho brand to AC? Possibly. Possibly. That's interesting. Hey, Woodson. 
whose name I totally did not forget. Heard you saved some rangers in Aspen. Glad to hear it. Place sounded like a goddamn nightmare. Yeah, it wasn't great. Of course. Let's see if we can find what you want. I think the full borer is new. But we'll hold off for the moment. I know I shouldn't be saying this, but none of this would be happening if the Patriarch could keep his kids in line. Yeah, you're right. You shouldn't be saying that. It's true, though, ain't it? I know he's a busy man, but a little time spent putting those brats over his knee would have done him a world of good. And saved us a world of trouble. No lie. Yeah, well, maybe you're right, but you still shouldn't be saying it. Intriguing. I'm glad the refugees have a place to stay. I just wish it wasn't a prison. Happy to. Take a look. Well, that's odd. He hasn't updated his inventory. I was under the assumption that uh, the armory was supposed to get new gear every time he finished an act. Which I think we did? Maybe the, uh, maybe the act isn't officially finished until we talk with whoever Angela sent to meet with us. Buckhorn! Buckhorn, come in! I got the motherfucker in my sights! Do I shoot or not? Uh, you've got the Desert Rangers. Who's this? Shit, the Rangers! Uh, wrong number! Sorry! Wait a minute. Were you about to shoot somebody? We kind of frown on that sort of thing. Hello? Ah, crap. I see. Connie Zhang. Oh. You know, I would have to double check, but I think... I think that's one of the uh, merchants from Wasteland 2. Man, it's been a while since I played that game. It's unfortunate you had to house the refugees in your brig. Now, what can I do for you? Right, nothing new from Gideon. What was I thinking? Safe travels, Rangers. Hate to see innocent folk living in a jail, but I'm having a hard time thinking of a better alternative. Now, what can I help you with? Anytime, Rangers. Always happy to tell. You'll hear a lot of stories about how the Patriarch beat the Plains gangs at last, but I was there. In the thick of it. The Battle of Punkin Center. I'll never forget. We had a perfect ambush ready for him, but their leader, Ironclad Cordite, was a canny SOB. And he was holding back and sending scouts. We couldn't have that. They'd spot the ambush. So, we had to make his troops jump the gun and force his hand. That was my job. Me and ten brave men and women under my command. We took our fastest rigs east under cover of night and saw their campfires an hour later. Hundreds of them. Thousands. Me and my best runner crept into the largest camp and set timed bombs in their ammo and fuel dumps, then raced back to the cars. Well, when things went boom, we fired into the camp to let them know we were there, then wheeled around and raced back west. I was afraid Cordite was going to be able to hold him back, but not even he could ride herd on 5,000 angry raiders. They chased us right back to Punkin Center, where the Patriarch and Daisy and our troops were waiting to rain hell down on him. A bloody day. A bloody week. But at the end, it forced the gangs to come to the table. I don't know what Saul told him. But they haven't been back since. 
Oh, that is... That is actually fascinating. Now, now obviously, uh, Sergei has no reason to be completely straightforward with the deepest, darkest secrets of the Patriarch's rise to power. But that does somewhat imply that the Patriarch might not have actually told him about the whole deal with the uh, Plains gangs. That might be something that he only relegated to Daisy and the leaders of those gangs themselves, since it does sound like almost everyone else, the gangs included, were kept in the dark. Hmm. You know, it actually kind of makes sense because even back in the original novella, Sergei was questioning the methods that the Patriarch was employing to help secure Colorado Springs. The, uh, the underhanded scheming, the deaths of innocence and collateral damage. So it is possible that the Patriarch would have cut him out of the loop entirely. For the betterment of Colorado Springs, etc., etc. Of course, it's also possible that Gratsky's just lying. I mean, why would he tell the truth if he did know it? But if he were lying, why would he even mention that they had a sit-down at the end of the battle? Why wouldn't he just say that they drove them off and were victorious in the end? You know, why leave that sort of question mark at the end of the tale? Anyway, um, it looks like we're actually coming up on the hour mark here, so... Given that I believe talking to Miss Zhang here will kick things off into the final act of the game, I think this makes for a good breakpoint. We'll hit the pause button for now. I'll do another lap around the base, make sure we're not missing anything, take care of our inventory and upgrades... And we will pick up here next time, as we uh, have a chat with Miss Zhang and find out a bit more about the elusive Angela Death. Who knows, maybe, uh, maybe she'll bring us around. But at this point, I am starting to have some doubts about uh, how much she's really thought this through. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Wasteland 3, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, feel free to push any of the buttons that do the things, or even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description. Hasta luego, benefactors!